everyone, Chaps here, and today we continue the build of the Prusa MK4 kit. Well, actually, today we finish it. Sorta. You'll see at the end. As usual, I got timestamps down below if you want to skip around. I've also got links to the other parts of the series and a longer video showing the full process. Also down there are some links to the official online assembly manual. And keep in mind that while I have two static cameras set up for this build that I'm going to flip between, my main priority was the build, not the camera angle so some of the views are not going to be the best. So hey, all that's left now is this y-axis, so let's get started. We start by getting out our heater plate and some of the cables. We'll attach some of these wires and the connectors to their plate. They use a wrench from one side and the allen key from the other, which can be kind of annoying. It makes me wish I had three hands. But once it's in place, we can angle them towards each other and tighten it down. Now let's get out some of the pieces and prepare the cover. It was actually sort of a pain to get these nuts in place. I tried the pull-through method, but I was really struggling. I ended up using the surface of the pliers as a hard, flat surface to press against. So this nylon gets pushed into a hole in the cover, and the wires are fed through the center hole. It actually took me a really long time, but I eventually got it screwed down. But now we come in with a cable sleeve and get it all twisted up. And let's pop the top cover in to clamp it all down. We're now pulling out the Y carriage, some bearings, and some clips and pads. We'll start by wiping off the bearings and greasing them up. So we've done this a few times throughout the process now, and this is the last one, and I'm still honestly not a fan of this greasing process. I feel like my adapter just wasn't working properly. I think I eventually got enough lube in there, but it seemed like it just was coming out of the bottom more than coming out of the actual holes in the adapter. So with those bearings out of the way, let's go on and assemble the pads to their clips. We'll start by screwing those into the carriage. The first one was a little tight, but I got to work. This other one on the other side, oh man, this was a pain, and I'm still actually kind of worried about it. I think that the carriage may have not been threaded properly, and I may have ended up cross-threading it. You'll see throughout this, I use a couple of screws, take them in and out, I try from the other side, and I even get another Allen wrench and attempt to stop the slippage. This was a huge pain, but I eventually got through it, sorta. I took the lazy route as I wasn't in the mood for fixing things at the time, but honestly, if you run into a part that's hard to thread, you should just take the clip off and try a screw by itself. You can do it from either side. Once the bearings are loosely in place, we'll slide the rods on and tighten things down. And again, this is where I ran into some serious issues trying to tighten that one screw down, but I eventually got it, I think, hopefully, and we can then put the carriage on the frame. We'll loosely attach it on either side, and then the back. And after ensuring everything works smoothly, we'll tighten it down and pinch the holder shut with some extra screws. We can now move on to the belt. After pushing some nuts into place, we'll push the belt into one side of the holder. It's then time to attach this to the underside of the carriage. Next, we're going to feed it through the driver pulley and out the other side. We can now attach the belt to the other bracket and feed the whole thing through the pulley on the front end. This next part was sort of a pain and it's attaching that second bracket to the carriage. Belt is sort of tight at this point, so it takes some trial and error to get it on. Unfortunately, even once it was on for me, things weren't quite right. The next step was to look at the belt and ensure it's centered, and mine definitely was not. I'm not sure how I missed this, but I actually installed the Y motor pulley upside down, thus it's being a little bit off center. I tried fixing it without taking the belt and brackets completely off, but that wasn't going to happen. I ended up just taking the belt back off, flipping the pulley, and getting it nicely lined up. From here, we can start getting the heater plate ready. We'll start by adding these expansion joints. Next, we add a spacer followed by the heater plate, which just gets screwed on. So you start with the center one loosely, then go sort of diagonal pattern around the outside, and then go back and tighten all of them up nicely. Now we can move on to the wiring. The braided cable will get fed into the buddy box and a cover clamps into place. We can then screw in a few cables and assure that everything fits properly. The Mark IV comes with a Wi-Fi adapter this time, so now is when we can hook that up. Apparently it's pretty slow, but hey, it's better than nothing. We're almost done with the buddy box now. We'll just put a bottom cover on, then a side cover, and then bam, it's all closed up. The spool holder is next, which honestly doesn't require any instructions to assemble. The filament guide comes after that, which has a surprising number of parts. There's some nylon inserts, some screws, and then some nuts to hold them in place. And then some screws to hold the guide to the spool holder. It's a nice addition, but honestly, this part was way more complicated than it needed to be. And I guess all that's left now is adding the print plate. And bam, two hours and 40 minutes later, the printer is fully assembled. If you've added up all the time so far, that brings us to a total of 11 hours and 20 minutes. I'll say that likely should have been closer to like 
maybe eight hours for someone semi-experienced and not terrible at this, and maybe ten hours to somebody who's new and again not terrible at this, but paying attention to the camera, or at least trying to occasionally, and some of my bonehead mistakes, and me just being straight up terrible at using this Allen wrench probably added quite a lot of time here. So with that assembled, I'm going to clear out some space and move the printer over to an outlet. And of course, I'll pick up the camera and move that over for you all. Alright, so here we go, the first boot up. It checks the axes, then wants me to tap the nozzle to confirm that the string gauge used for first layer calibration is working, and then it checks the fans and heaters. Then being this is the first startup, it wants to do some adjustments to the next extruder. I'm not really sure what that's all about, but hey, I'll let it do its thing. So we have to unscrew it slightly, and then let it do its stuff, and then tighten everything back up. Alright, lastly, it's a filament sensor check, and bam, we're done. Well, except for the fact that I failed the x-axis. Here I go through some troubleshooting trying to figure it out. I thought it was this cable holder or this cable management thing on the right side of the buddy box, but I fixed that and it still failed. Turns out it was actually this zip tie on the back end. So I had to tighten that down a little bit more, rotate it into position, make sure I clipped off any excess. And after getting that all squared away, I gave it another go. This time, thankfully it all passes. I put in the included flash drive, and well, first off, it's a really tight fit, which I've read from people online. Like, if it's hard to put in, I say maybe just scrap the included flash drive and use your own. But not only was it a tight fit, but it wasn't even being recognized. So I ran upstairs, got a new flash drive, and tried to put that one in. But it didn't work either. So it turns out some of the pins on my LCD board got bent. Maybe it bent while I was trying to force the flash drive in there. Or maybe it just shipped that way. I've seen a few other people online with that issue as well. Luckily, Prusa support is amazing, and they shipped out a new one. For now, we're going to assume that all works out great. I'm not going to delay putting out these videos until the new board arrives. And I'm sure you're going to find out soon enough as I start doing some more 3D printing videos again. So yeah, that wraps up this video and the build of the Prusa Mark IV. Hopefully you enjoyed this build process along the way. It was interesting trying to film it all and document it. I loved my Mark III, and really hopefully the improvements on this Mark IV here are worth it. Thanks again to all of you who made it this far through the video or through the series, and if you think I earned it, please consider hitting that like and subscribe button. Thanks for watching everyone, and I'll catch you next time. See ya!